is humanly possible in doing this. So we set some very specific criteria. We began by saying these are the categories that we're going to put inside the delegate list. And these are the criteria. Former state party chairman, our current elected officials, our current county party officers, our former county party chairman, our Republican club presidents, our new president committeemen, and our new precinct presidents. Precinct committeemen and precinct presidents. Because not everyone uh, chose to be a state delegate, we were fortunate that we covered all of those categories inside that delegate list. We are allowed 100 half votes. So all of those all of those categories I mentioned are inside and on the delegate list. Now, we then move to a category that we call recognized GOP workers. But they didn't fall into any one of those categories that I just mentioned. So I'm going to give you what we thought was the best example. And that would be Walter McSherry. He's not an elected official. He's not a party officer, but he is a financial supporter of the party. He attends every single county executive committee meeting. He goes to all the Republican women's club meetings. I don't mean just one club, but all of them. And he is a constant volunteer at the county party headquarters. So if anybody deserved to be inside that delegate list, it would certainly be Walter McSherry. So you get the idea of what we were looking for. There. Okay. After we filled those 100 spots, delegate spots, then we moved into the alternates. We continued with the recognized GOP workers and to uh, those individuals who held another precinct office. They were precinct officer, just not committeeman or president. Now, just so that you will know, remember that all 100 delegates will be seated. They will all be seated. Now, for the alternates, they will be seated together. They will get to see and hear all of the convention proceedings. They will be called up in the order, and you will see that the <coughs> alternates are numbered. They will be called up in that, I hate to say priority order, but that's just the order in which they'll be called up to fill a delegate chair as there are vacancies. And of course, as many of you know who've gone in the past, there are always some delegates who can't come, so there are always vacancies and there's rotation through. All right, I think that's all the explanation is necessary. You have that proposed slate in front of you of our state delegates and alternates and the nominating committee moves the election of this slate as presented to you. Mr. Chair. Uh, we have a motion from the committee, it doesn't require a second, that we approve the listing, and all of them has a copy in their hand, right? Uh, we got a listing of the delegates and the alderman. Doesn't require a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir, please come to the mic. My name is Jeff Mitchell with the Landrum High School um, Precinct. Yes, sir. I serve as ex-president there. Thank you. My question is, of your county alternates you have listed, some of those are running for office today for our Spartanburg County uh, uh, officers. And they are shown as alternates here. Would, if they were elected, would they move from the alternate uh, list and supplant some who may be in there as a worker, as you listed, a faithful worker or some other uh, um, uh, a person on the delegate list such that they might supplant that, that spot? In the past, we had just always gone with the current um, county party officers sort of in respect of their service of the past two years. Yes, and, and I'm not proposing that they get uh, knocked off, but 
you know, we are trying to move forward, and I would prefer that we not do things exactly as we have done them in the past. So, if we have someone who's put forth the energy and effort to want to run for the office this year, and they are elected here by the delegation, it would be my suggestion, move, uh, however we need to handle this with Robert's Rules of Order, that they get moved into the delegate list and that they supplant someone who was a lower tier as the nominating committee had put these folks together. I want to uh, make that suggestion with all due respect to the nominating committee and their hard work. Thank you very much. Who in particular were you referencing? Well, I noticed from our particular um, uh, precinct that Pamela Satterfield is running for treasurer and she is listed as an alternate number number 49. And so should, if she is elected, uh, represent as a, uh, be the 49th selection as an alternate. Is that the only person you're uh, That's the only one that I noticed, but there may be others. I, I, I'm trying to take care of uh, what I know is uh, right here in front of me, given the time frame allowed. So thank you. Is there any other questions? I'd be happy to. Uh, the chair asked, are you, what you said a suggestion, is that what you're doing? Or yes, I, I, if, if it is within uh, for me to make a motion, what I would do is move that anyone who is elected to serve in the current term as a county officer, that they get moved from the alternate list to the delegate list and supplant those whom are at the lower end that the nominating committee has put together. Thank you very much. Let's make sure. We're, we're yeah. correct. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's word your amendment again to make sure we know exactly what we're saying. And it was well, Jeff, with, Jeff, with all, Jeff. Jeff Mitchell. Uh, uh, thank you. And uh, everyone, I thank you for your patience. I got this list. I was at the back. I got this list just a moment. Notice this. Well, that's, that's okay. Let's just give me, give me the motion, sir. Give me your motion. I move that should someone elected today as a county GOP officer be shown on the alternate state convention list. That, that is being shown, right? That is being that currently is being shown, shown right. as an alternate on the state convention list. Right. Right. That they be moved from an alternate position right. to a delegate position. Okay. Um, According to what I'm looking at on the alternate list, Pamela Satterfield would be the only person affected, so that could be a very easy change for that one name to move up. That would certainly be no problem as far as, as we're concerned. Um, if your wish is to make them a delegate, not alternate, um, would you be happy with that being spot number 100? That would move Nicole Cobb into first alternate. Is that I, satisfactory? I'm going to leave that part of it to the uh, nominating committee to make that okay. decision. I, well, I just want them to okay. be moved and to but as we need a delegate to do this rather than because alternate. we have to elect yes, it today. I understand. All right. All right. So, so make sure we all understand. The motion is, and it appears that Mr. Mitchell is affecting one person, is that that person is on the list as an alternate. And I'm not wording it exactly the way it is so we know is that that person would be moved to a delegate position uh, wherever the credential of uh, the nominating committee feels like that person needs to be on that list of the, of the 100 votes, right? Should they, should they be elected? Yes, to right. should they, they be elected, the, the they'd be moved office. from an alternate yes. to a delegate position. Correct. Now, let me, let me share with you, well, uh, you want to speak on the motion, Nick? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, uh, this, this may make it easier. Wait, 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 wait. I just want to make sure that we're speaking on the motion. I am speaking can't... on this motion. That's correct. Uh, um, it has uh, come to our attention that my wife, Casey Lane, is on the delegate list. She is unable to attend now because of a, a new conflict that has arisen. And I propose that, that if we're going to move Pamela Southfield to this list, that Ke she take Casey's well, spot. Well, well, we're only moving her on a, on a condition that she be elected. Uh, that's yeah, fine, that, if that's, that's the case. That's the motion okay. right now. That's the motion right now. Would you be willing uh, to change the motion to take Casey's spot? 
No, no, I don't. I, don't, I, 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 I think we got a problem. We'll start doing that. No, what I don't want to. He's, supplant, he's got. He's got what, his I'm, what I'm trying to do is deal with a concept. I'm not trying to supplant the hard work of the nominating committee. That's all I'm trying to do is communicate the concept that if we have our officers elected this year, that they have the opportunity to go to the state convention this year and serve as a delegate. I got. Thank you. We're going to vote. We got to vote on that amendment right now. That amendment's on the floor. Well, wait, wait, wait. I did not say we're stopping discussion, sir. We're voting on one amendment, one amendment right now. That amendment's got the floor. He's got to throw that amendment up or down right now. But we can take another. We can take another. No. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment to the motion that we allow anybody that's elected as an officer today that's on the alternate position be moved to the delegate position. Are we together with what I'm saying there? That's what we're saying. All right. Those in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. 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 The ayes have it. All right. Next amendment. Next discussion. If I remember right, we're, the Republican Party believes in having a democracy, and I don't believe anybody on here was elected. Um, for those that supported Lee Bright, did they get any points for helping out with his campaign, or for those that helped with Gay Holt, were they awarded any points? Wait, just one minute. Give me your name, your precinct, sir. Evan Moltz, Mount Sinai Baptist. I'm also the chairman of the upstate I, chapter. Wait, 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 back up. I'm a little slow, a little old and a little slow. So get it to me. My name's slow. Evan Mulch. Yes, sir. I live in the Mount Sinai Baptist precinct. Right. And I'm also the chairman of the upstate chapter of the South Carolina Republican Liberty Caucus. I participate in Republican politics for nearly two years now in South Carolina. Just, just, just give me your, give me if you This got is a part motion. of the discussion. Give me, yeah, give me, I am ranked give me a motion, sir. 83, no, this is part of the discussion. I'll make a motion. I'm ranked 83 on the list of alternates. I've helped with multiple campaigns here in South Carolina. I had a hard time even getting on the email list for this local, for our local county Republican party. I was never asked to work the weekends I, I don't know what I needed to do to be a delegate, but I want to go to the state convention and represent my county, and I've put in a lot of time, and I don't think I'm the only one. I think we should go forward and elect the delegates that attend the state convention. I think the way we're doing this is wrong. I've heard from my friends in Greenville that they actually elect their delegates. We need to do this the right way. This is a, we believe in democracy as Americans. That's the way we should move forward. To address a little bit, Evan, uh, when I talked about the recognized GOP workers, I also talked about if you were other pre if you held an office within the precinct. Uh, do you hold office inside your precinct? We we move to those just because we're trying I, to get to be precinct. honest. I do not hold an office, okay. but, but I but I have donated you know a lot of valuable time. I, I know that, to, and I, to, I dare say, uh, Evan, that everybody on this list has donated time what, what, what I'm saying is that we're doing this the wrong way there's a right way to do this we are believers in a democracy a constitutional republic that protects democracy so I would like to move forward and have an actual election on delegates rather than have a slate proposed to us no. um, I will say that there has been some internal discussion though not in front of the convention and that will be the pleasure of the convention but um, it has not been a popular idea because it takes hours and hours and hours and frequently people are voting for people they don't know. As I told you, we try to set up criteria and do it as objectively as is humanly possible. I don't know that there is a perfect way to do this, but you know, it takes hours. How does Greenville hours. County do it? They do it by election and it takes them hours and hours and hours and hours and I, people are still unhappy at the end of the day. My name is uh, Cal. Wait, 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 wait. Are you finished, sir? All right. All right. Now, introduce yourself. My name is uh, Calvin Cowan. I'm with Beach Springs Elementary Precinct. And I would like to make a motion that we have a voice vote on this issue. Not here, but I just want to get a general idea of how people at this convention feel about this. So I'd like to do a voice vote. Not to change the rules this year, but to see if people might want to change the rules or the way the selection is made next year. Right now, we're doing it by committee. I'd like to have 
hear the eyes and the nays that would like to hear, like to have it done the way Evan was talking, the way Greenville does it next year, doesn't do it. The way Greenville does it now, I'd like to get a voice vote to see if people would like to have Spartanburg do it the same way Greenville does. Well, you, can't, you, can't, you cannot do that, sir, with an emotion that we have right now. Aye. Uh, Aye. Evan, Evan never made a motion. I'm making a motion just to hear eyes. You're either go, we're either going to vote up or down what we got here or amend what we're doing right here. If you want to stay here the afternoon, then we'll, we'll start from scratch and elect every individual. But the rules that we have right now, this is where we're at, sir. I'm not, not ruling you out of order. I'm saying that we cannot make that motion at this time frame. What's the motion on the floor? The motion on the floor is to elect the list that you have in front of you, sir. Thank you. That's the motion on the floor. Now, we do have one amendment we got to vote on, but the motion on the floor as amended is what we had from Mr. Mitchell. Question has been called. All those in favor of the question say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The ayes have it. We will vote on the motion as presented, the list as presented with the amendment. All those in favor of the motion as amended say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No! The ayes have it. All those in favor of the motion as amended. I'm up here and I can hear everybody, so we have it. So the chair rules that the ayes have it. Can we have a visual of that? What's that? A visual? Oh, it's being called. I've already called it. So, you know, we're, we've still got to vote. we still got to vote. Oh, with me. You voted on the amendment as, as was added to the motion. Now we're voting on the motion as amended, which says the list plus the one change that Mr. Mitchell made. All those in favor of that say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Hi, I'd like I'd like to just make a point, Rosemary. Uh, 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 Artie, Hi, Artie. Okay. We, we're we're on the agenda right now. Okay. I'll give you a minute. I give I give. I, we're on the agenda as we approve to start with. So that is over with right now. We're at the next part on the agenda. Okay. It was a point uh, of order as to the qualifications that we had, and, and I agree with the qualifications. We have I'm not arguing that at all. Artie, Artie, Can I? Artie, no. We, we we can't do that. Artie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 